right. So, with all of that being said, uh, we can start us off with, I'm going to pass over the microphone to Miss Casey Sunshine, who's going to be giving us a talk on building designer relationships. Before I do this, I, I just want to say uh, Casey's been in Hanoi for about six months. Um, in that time, she's been teaching English, like all of us. Um, she's also been doing pole dancing, and she's starting a career as a coach. Uh, so, yeah, take it away, Casey. Thank you very much. All right. So, we are all... So, how many of us here are interested in having a relationship of some kind? Raise your hand. I know I am. All right, great. M I picked the most general subject ever because I nerd out about this stuff. So, designer relationships. And the question I like to present to you is, how can we consciously co-create our relationships to best suit the needs of the people in them? Now that I read that out loud, it sounds a little bit like New Age hippie crap, but bear with me here. We're going we're gonna to go into this. So, a little bit about me. My favorite subject. <laughs> so I am a veteran polyamorist of seven years. I have, you know, been in a lot of things, seen a lot of things, read a lot of books. And if you were curious, yes, I don't have any partners here in Hanoi. So anybody interested, call me. I actually am very much pro-monogamy. Uh, a lot of people assume that, you know, since I'm polyamorous, like, I'm against monogamy, and I actually certainly had that phase, but, like, you know, I actually think it's a beautiful thing when you decide to, ha when you decide to do that. Uh, I firmly believe that relationships are collaborative experiences, and that bucks against the way a lot of us either consciously or unconsciously think of them as objects. And uh, if I can budge your, 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 your understanding of that just a little bit tonight, then it will be a success. And um, since I have outed myself as a practicing polyamorous, I'm sure some of you have some burning questions about my personal life. And while I have absolutely no shame, we do have limited time here. So... Please just save your questions for afterwards. Uh, buy me a drink. I'll talk to you all night. So, read this book. If anything you take away from tonight, it is a wonderful, wonderful book. It is very easy to read. It is applicable to everyone, whether you are monogamous, polyamorous, or something in betwixt, in between. Um, and you can read it cover to cover on a long flight. It's not like a very complicated relationship book. I really like it. I find it to be a very handy guide to navigating this complicated world we call relating. So, now we've got that through. What the fuck is a designer relationship anyway? Well, what a designer relationship is, as opposed to, per se, say, uh, like sort of what I would call an off-the-rack relationship where like many of us have this uh, notion in our head that relationships follow a certain script. We've uh, you know seen this narrative in movies. We've seen it played out in society through our parents, through everything, where a relationship is you meet one person, you fall in love with them, you declare the relationship as quote-unquote serious by becoming sexually exclusive. Uh, you, in some order of sequence, you move in, you combine finances, and then you legally join and reproduce and, you know, if it's a truly successful relationship, you die together. And frankly, I think that's a little weird and morbid. So, um, uh, so what uh, what I believe that relationships can and should be is rather a chosen experience, one that considers many options, and you know, d and like takes the needs of the people involved. And while I can't tell any one person here what their ideal relationship would look like, uh, I can lay out some ground rules for what all healthy designer relationships should look like. So, that said, what are some of those ground rules? We have uh, 
des healthy designer relationships are ones where all parties are enthusiastic members. They all decide, fuck yes, I want to be here. This is great. And if it's not going great for me, we're willing to redesign. It is mutually defined agreements. If someone, like, you know, it... It's where you say, hey, this is what I want, this is what I'm bringing to the table, this is what I need, and, it, and you make it as clear as humanly possible. And, of course, we have miscommunications. Communication is hard as shit, but you do so to the best of your abilities as a human. Um, it... Uh, all forms of relating are considered. My main beef with monogamy isn't that... Um, oh, it's monogamy or anything like that. It's that peop a lot of people don't choose monogamy. A lot of people see monogamy as the only valid form of having a romantic relationship. And that is the notion that I want to challenge. Not monogamy itself. Uh, you are in a, an ideal designer relationship. You are all dedicated to maintaining the radical respect for all parties involved. You are not seeing this person as a means towards social validation, as a ticket out of your economic situation, as a person who solves all your problems. I have done that one many times. It never works out. <laughs> you are de dedicated to the radical respect of all parties involved, starting with yourself and, of course, extending to your partners, friends, lovers, family members, all the relationships. Uh, they are transparent and honest. Again, to the best of your abilities, you are as honest as you, are, as you can be to, with yourself and with others. And as a bonus, we have regular STI testing out of respect and safety because you cannot have a discussion that involves polyamory without mentioning STI testing. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> some examples of these radical and wild relationships would include people who are single by choice. There are a lot of people who you know, they don't want to get married or like, they want to take occasional lovers, have friends with benefits, and just not do the whole relationship escalator thing. There are people who are asexual or just want to be in emotionally close non-sexual relationships. Uh, there are people who choose to be monogamous. I love people who choose to be monogamous. I really do. <laughs> Uh, there's this sort of don't ask, don't tell non-monogamy, where uh, you choose to not be monogamous and you choose to not ask questions. Now, personally, I don't like that. I, I, that's not the way I like to operate, but uh, I'm sure it works for like somebody out there. Uh, open relationships are monogamish, where you're like mostly pair bonded with one person, and then like you know maybe you go to like orgies together or something, or maybe that's swinging. It gets the, the examples get a little bit muddied at points. We have friends with benefits. We have let's just keep going, swinging, polyamory, woohoo! And we have kink, ooh la la. Now kinky relationships aren't necessarily sexual relationships, um, but that was a talk for like a couple weeks ago. Maybe last week, I don't know, I wasn't there. <laughs> Let's, come on, slide. Now, this is all awesome, but wouldn't it be better in a chart? <laughs> I think it would be better in a chart. <laughs> Look at the chart. <laughs> no, okay. Um, I'm just going to let you in on like just a little like uh, fantasy of mine is I hope someday that I will have a partner and on the third date or so we will open, we will cuddle up and have a romantic bottle of wine and go through this printed out chart with a pen and decide what exactly we we our experience is going to be and this may seem like a crazy and um overthinking third date but somebody out there has to be into it 
<laughs> no, but um, if you find this to be an interesting and cool chart, uh, I will post it to the Facebook group. Um, I think it's a really interesting way to um, conceptualize and break down what our relationships actually can and could be. Because, like, you know, maybe we, like, you know, we go, like, hey, like, Really like the emotional intimacy. Really like emotional support. Um, we're really cool. It's like going to parties together, but like I never want to be business partners with you. Like my business is my own thing. Um, and uh, my art, that's my thing. You stay out of that. Um, and like I think that would be a really, I think it would be really cool if we talked a little bit more about uh, what makes our relationships work and what doesn't. But seriously, guys, read this book. We just, like, went over, like, half of the first chapter. There's, like, so much more in this. It's really cool. Um, it's really accessible. I think it's a great way to think about how we construct relationships with other people. And now just a few, like, food for thought questions that you can, like, maybe jot down, take a picture of, whatever. Uh, when we have our break. Question one. What sort of lifestyle do I want for myself? If you are, a, if you want to be a lifelong traveler, if you want to be a nomadic person, you know, a marriage and a house and kids and a white picket fence might not be something that really works with that. Uh, the, kind of, the kind of lifestyle you have and want and desire will also will highly determine what sort of relationships work for you. Um, another question, what kind of relationships would best suit my needs? Uh, personally, I do really well with close, intimate friendships. Um, I, I get bored with relationships that have absolutely no in emotional intimacy, um, but sexual exclusivity kind of freaks me out, and I start acting out in weird ways that I don't like, so little bit about me. Um, so yeah, sexual exclusivity doesn't work for me. Uh, and I know that. And also, how can I best communicate to my partner, uh, to my partner, potential partners, close friends and family, my needs? Um, that is a deceptively simple question that actually leads to a whole rabbit hole that I could spend a whole evening talking about. But we do not have time for that. So I will just drop that little seed of interest into your head. And uh, thank you very much for listening to my talk tonight. <laughs>